Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. As I noted last week with this scoop video, I had to take a step back and make some soft jaws for my chuck to do this effectively and efficiently. Now, actually, I have been working on this for quite some time. As you may know, I have a 3D printer, so I decided to design a blank chuck base for my Vicmark VM120 chuck. I did it, but then as I studied it more, I got nervous about two things. One is, well, this is plastic, and I'm not sure whether plastic can hold up to the rotational stress uh, on the lathe. So I said, okay, not so much. It's static world for plastic. The other thing is, in order to use this effectively, I needed to put bolts or screws through it, and those would take come into the wood, and I get nervous about screws in wood where I'm turning. So I have uh, backed away from the 3D print to salvage my work. I <coughs> very flattened them, in effect, and make this into a template, two different styles of templates. I've chosen half-inch Baltic birch plywood to make my chuck flat, uh, blank chucked jaws out of. So I've got all those notes here. Uh, the Vicmark uses a metric bolt. It uses a M6 and it uses a flathead bolt. I decided I didn't want to fuss with the taper on the flathead, so I just chose a socket head bolt, which has a Allen wrench top and then just sits down into a recess. So in order to use this, I need to drill a quarter inch hole, which is just slightly bigger than M6. Uh, I need to drill a hole that is a half inch to hold the whole head and to a depth of a quarter inch or halfway through my wood. And uh, so that's uh, the specs for that is also the exact size so that I can trace around it with a pencil and be able to cut it. So trace around it on a small piece of Baltic birch and then cut it out and drill it. I'll show you all that in this video. And then here we go. This is one style that I made with that. It's uh, wood then that is glued on to the wood blanks so I don't have to worry about hitting a screw anywhere in the top part of this. Once I get down to the jaws, yeah I do need to be careful but that's any chuck has that issue. Another style that I have made but not used yet is to use a segmented ring on top instead of just flat square. Uh, no particular advantage other than I, I could do that. And then another style is just to use two flat boards on it. This uses a full, in effect, two jaws, but only on one side, so that these two jaws can clamp together on a piece of wood. Uh, I haven't used those yet this time, but I'm planning to use those in the future. So you'll see those later. But for now, let's go ahead and turn this Baltic birch plywood into a useful soft jaws for my chuck and very adaptable to whatever I need it to do and without marring the project that I have. So, let's show you how. After experimenting with 3D printed soft jaws, I have moved back to wood since I can tool wood and cannot tool 3D plastic. Plus, I can use glue to join pieces instead of screws. I used my previous 3D experiments to make a template with hardware notes. Plastic is incidental. Stiff paper would do fine for the template. The template has the shape, bolt positions, and bolt specs for Vicmark VM120 jaws. With some 1 half inch Baltic birch plywood, I traced the template and punched the bolt positions. I cut the plywood on the bandsaw, trying to stay outside the line. Then sanded to the line with at the disc center. My notes indicate to drill a one half inch hole one quarter inch deep to allow for the socket head bolt. Then a quarter inch drill has plenty of clearance for a M6 bolt. Then cut some 8-4 wood, species is not critical, as a four segment ring. For better handling, I apply double stick tape to the joints. With a rubber band around the chuck bases, I am ready to transfer markings. A set of transfer punches works great to mark the hole position from the jaw base to the 8-4 wood. I have drilled the outer access hole. At this point, I probably made a mistake. Instead of drilling the inner hole, I decided to rip off the point. 
that made my jaw diameter smaller. Now they are ready to glue together. I used a larger transfer punch to ensure the holes are aligned while gluing. Then cut off the corners. The rough jaws are now mounted to my chuck. Please note that I did a test fit with the plywood bases earlier. My new soft jaws are ready for final refinement at the lathe. With the jaws at minimum, I only need to round off the outside and face off the front. Of course, the curve change as they are expanded, but at least they will not have dangerous tips. With a 2 inch Forstner bit, I trimmed the inner diameter. This defines the minimum hold for these jaws. This relates to my earlier comment about making the jaws perhaps too small. With a round nose scraper, I cut a slight hollow on the inner diameter of the jaws to cup the bowl portion just a bit. And this set of soft jaws is ready for use. As I continue to use this set, the center will gradually become bigger as I adapt it to various projects. When too big, I can either make another set of bases or start over or clear off the upper, solid upper, and glue on a new set. I'll likely just make a new set and let the original get bigger and bigger. I also made a set of jaws with segmented techniques. However, I'm not sure it was worth the extra effort. Now for the parallel jaw style. This looks as if it would replace two jaws at once. However, if it did, the chuck could not expand and contract. Instead, each side is expanded 45 degrees. One replaces two jaws, but bolts to the base of only one. The specs for my Vicmark VM120 chuck are printed on my template. You would need the specs for your jaws. I need M6 socket head screws 10 or 12 millimeters long. Buy some spares. I trace the template onto half inch Baltic birch plywood. A center punch marks the bolt holes and provides a dimple to start the drill. But first, sand the plywood to a line. Then I drill the one half inch countersunk holes. Then using the center of the first drill, drill the smaller hole. If you reverse the process, well, trouble, Will Robinson. Then cut a two by two by eight piece for the upper section of the jaws. I have used some double stick tape to position the uppers to the plywood base. A transfer punch then marks the position for the hole to use when fastening to the chuck base. I also use a one half inch transfer punch to align the holes while I glue the upper wood to the plywood base. And this set of parallel jaws is ready for another project that I have in mind. Stay tuned. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions every week. I need to add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life and it can save yours. And if you use it, I'll be able to see you again next week.